Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a very complex expression. So we have negative 1 to the power square root of 3 minus i and we're going to simplify this expression. Now this channel is about complex numbers but I have another channel called CyberMath that is about algebra, number theory and trigonometry. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. Let's take a look. We have negative 1 at the base and root 3 minus i at the guitar, I mean at the exponent. And now we're going to simplify this. Normally, in the real world, if you raise negative 1 to a power, you either get 1 or negative 1. Why? Think about it. If you raise negative 1 to the power 3, it's negative 1 because 3 is odd. If you raise negative 1 to the second power, that becomes positive 1. Because if you multiply to negative, it's a positive. Later, I'm planning to make a video about it. But anyways, that's a different story. So it's in the real world that we get these results. What happens if you raise negative 1 to the power 3 over 5, right? Well, that's an interesting question because with fractional powers, we have to be very careful. And you can interpret this as negative 1 to the power 3, and then that to the power 1 fifth, because 3 times 1 over 5 is 3 fifths, right? What is negative 1 to the third power? We just talked about it. It's negative 1. So this becomes negative 1 to the power 1 over 5. Now, wh what does 1 over 5 mean? Well, it just means in the real world, again, or thinking in terms of a radical, uh, I should say, fractional power, it would mean something like the fifth root of negative 1, which is obviously negative 1, because negative 1 to the fifth power is, you know, just negative 1 again. But what happens if you get something like this? Negative 1 to the power 7 over 2. Hmm. This could be a little problematic, because if you write it as negative 1 to the seventh power, to the power 1 half, you get negative 1 to the power 1 half, but square root of negative 1 is not well defined, at least in the real world. But in complex world, we can take care of that, okay? So this is problematic in the real world. Now, what happens uh, if you have something like this? 6 over 2, negative 1 to the power 6 over 2. Again, this is problematic because 6 over 2 is not simplified. Obviously, that's going to be a 3. But if you look at it this way, actually, that's not going to be a problem. Oh, if I put a 5 here, then that's going to be an issue. Anyways, you get the idea. Let's not go into the details. So that's what happens with negative 1 in the real world. But in the complex world, things are different. And this is very, very complex and kind of complicated too because you have negative one and then you're raising it to a complex power. So what does it mean to raise a negative number to a complex power? I mean, if you had a one, would that be one? Because all powers of one should be one, right? So is this one? I want you to think about this. Or what if you had something like this, right? But this is even crazier than that because we have negative one. But don't worry, I'm going to give you a general method that you can apply to any problem of this type and easily simplify something like this. I think in another video, we did square, negative 1 to the power square root of 2, which is raising a negative number to an irrational power, which is also pretty interesting. Go ahead and check it out. If I can find the link, I'll share it. So, to be able to simplify this, we kind of need to consider the complex exponentiation. What is that supposed to mean? It means that whenever you have two complex numbers, z and w, and you try to exponentiate with them, like z to the power w, of course, this doesn't have any meaning if you don't have a well-definition, right? Well-defined definition. For example, what is 3 to the fourth power? You write the 3 four times and multiply, it's 81, right? That's easy to do. But what does 3 to the power one third mean. Do you write the three one third times? No, not really. Actually, you need to write a number three times to get a three. It's the kind of like the other way around. With the complex numbers, it's defined as such. We can write z to the power w as e to the power, and be careful about this, w times ln z. But ln z brings another issue. This is a complex logarithm, right? Not just that, like a normal logarithm. This is a complex logarithm. So we're going to have to talk about that as well. What is the logarithm, the natural logarithm, by the way, of a complex number? So how do you ln any complex number? And there's a method to do it. If you can write z in polar form like re to the i theta, when you ln, it's just going to be ln r 
plus i theta. Of course, theta can be replaced with theta plus 2 pi n because theta is considered usually the principal argument, which is the smallest angle between negative pi and pi, and you are allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it because it's going to bring you to the same point. Think about it. You have an angle theta, add 2 pi to it, or subtract 2 pi, or add, keep doing it, you're going to get to the same point over and over. But we have to express it in a more general form. So, the na natural log of a complex number, which is the complex logarithm, can be found by natural logging the modulus, because r is the modulus, or the absolute value, right? Okay, how do you find the absolute value of the complex number? It's the distance from zero. So if you have z and r, and let's say this is, uh, should I use a and b? Probably. This is real, this is imaginary, this is the argon plane, z equals a plus b i, r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared from the Pythagorean theorem. And tangent theta is b over i, needless to, b over a, I mean, needless to say, but that's not super important now. Great, so, by the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on basics of complex numbers. And ask questions, that's the best way to learn. Now, let's go ahead and apply this to this problem. So, negative 1 to the power root 3 minus i, based on our definition, can be written as root 3 minus i, right, times ln, so e to the power w, which is the exponent, times ln of negative 1. Okay. Oh, by the way, it should be e to the power. Sorry about that. I forgot the e. I wrote the logarithm. e to the power root 3 minus i multiply by ln of negative 1. Normally in the real world, ln of a negative number is undefined because ln is only defined for positive numbers, but it's only in the real world. In the complex world, ln 0 is not defined either, but everything else is defined, even ln of a complex number, which, which we talk about. So to be able to find the ln of negative 1, we're going to have to consider ln of the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, ln 1 is 0, by the way, plus i times theta. What is theta if our number is negative 1? Well, negative 1 is going to be right here because it's a real number. It'll make an angle of pi radians, so its angle is pi. But we're allowed to add 2 pi n, like I said before, to write the whole thing. In the most general form, this is 0, so ln negative 1 is given by that. But then, that's not the whole story because we're going to place it, replace it with that. So negative 1 to the power root 3 minus i equals e to the power root 3 minus i multiplied by ln negative 1, which is i times pi plus 2 pi n. The story doesn't end here, so, hang, uh, you know, just... <laughs> um, Hang around, let, uh, just stick around because just bear with me, we're almost done. Okay, great. Um, so for simplicity's sake, simplicity's sake, I can just assume that n is equal to zero for now and you can look at the other cases or general case and now we're going to get something like e to the power i pi multiplied by root 3 minus i because this is going to disappear if n is zero. And now this can be simplified a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, distribute. We get a negative i squared, which is actually 1. It's going to be e to the power 1 plus i times root 3 pi. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It, might, it may not make sense to you, but e to the power a complex number. We can separate it and write it like this. And this is the most beautiful part because thanks to Euler, we have the most beautiful equation. Now we can go ahead and write this as cosine root 3 pi plus i times sine of root 3 pi. Because Euler said e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And again, it is the most beautiful equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus B I, and bye-bye.